paid and everything. I'm late. It's a late night here at West Tech. I'm actually doing some flow testing. I'm going to show you what I'm flow testing. I want to get this done because I'm on the dyno actually down here over at, with my guys over at Skunk 2. We're running the K24. That's right, the K24 Big Bang stuff. But before we do that, we're going to run some NA stuff. I'm going to run some lower boost turbo stuff. We're going to do some testing the way that we normally do with all these motors before we turn it all the way up to 11. But I wanted to give you an update on this motor also. This is the L99. This is the 4.3 liter V8, the little baby LT1. You can see I've got some parts over here. Got the intake off, got the rockers. And as you can see, spin around here. I've got one of the cylinder heads off. Remove that tonight so that I can airflow test it. What I want to do is I have the L99 head. I also have the LT1 head and I have an LT4 head. So what I wanted to do was flow test the L99 head because nobody seems to know what the flow rate is of that head. So I'm going to flow test that head. I'm going to flow test the LT1 head and flow test the LT4 head. While that data seems to be out there and readily available, I want to flow them all on the same bench in the same day and compare them kind of back to back in the same situations. So I know that the flow data, you know, it's a good way to, to compare the two. So I want to flow that. Also, I want to let you guys know I checked the... Um, when I took the head off, I checked the valve size. It is a 184 intake valve and a 15 exhaust valve. I also measured the chamber, not just the chamber volume, which we are going to measure, but I measured the chamber width because that's what I was really concerned with. We measured the chamber width on the LT1 head and on the LT4 head, and they're both quite a bit bigger than the width on this head, which tells us that you know, <laughs> I got my fingers crossed, hoping that I think that the LT1 head is going to fit because that's the other reason I pulled the head off. I want to check this head, actually both of these heads. This is an LT4, and in this box is our LT1 head. Yep. Factory LT1 head. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the LT1 head on that motor over there now that I have the head off. And I can actually actuate the valves up and down. We'll put little test springs on them like we have on here. You guys can see this. It's little checker springs so that we can go like this. Wah, 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 wah. I'm going to put checker springs on those heads. I'm going to set them on the motor, on the dowels and everything so that I can actuate the valves and see if that bigger valve will actually fit on that small bore. I'm going to do it both to the LT1 and to the LT4 heads, which will be kind of cool. So I'll find out if the big valves will indeed fit and then we'll have some cylinder head options. I'm hoping at least that the LT1 head fits because then I want to do a ported LT1. I want to mill it and I want to put it on here and see how much more power we can get. And I think that... Um, what I want to do is I'm going to let, give you guys an update on the K24 because, I'm like I said, I drove down today, <laughs> left at 5 o'clock from Northern California, got here, unloaded this motor, went and picked up the K24, brought that over to Skunk 2, got that motor up on the dyno, and we had a little bit of excitement today because we put this thing up on the dyno over at Skunk 2, and what I like to do, what I always try to do when I get the motors that I get from the wrecking yard is we put the motor up, and before we get too far into it, I always like to spin the motor and do two things. I want to see a compression test, and I also want to make sure that there's oil pressure, because those, both of those things are critical. If we have both of those things, usually all of the rest of, rest of the testing goes okay. So here's a question for you guys. What happens when you put the motor up on the dyno and spend all day doing this, and then finally do your compression test? And three of the cylinders of the motor that you brought down from Northern California, three of the cylinders do not have compression in them. That's right, the K24, no compression in three cylinders. That's awesome. So you'll find out what happened. I'm going to be doing a full video, or I'm going to be doing a live video tomorrow from Skunk with that K24 to let you guys know what's going on with that motor and whether or not we were able to fix it or whether or not I had to take it off and we've got to start all over again. So make sure to tune in tomorrow live and I'm going to be doing that, <laughs> letting you guys know what's going on with the Skunk motor. But let's get back to our airflow testing of our L29 head. I thought maybe you guys might want to sit in. I'm actually going to do the airflow testing right now so you guys will get to see that. I'll put you guys in your little uh, 
in your little cradle here. Yeah, it's, yeah, <laughs> I agree, Brandon, it's, it's not good. When you go through all the work all day, we tore all the accessories off, we put all the adapters on and got everything taken care of and got this thing up on the dyno. We had to pull a coyote off because they also do coyote testing there. We pulled this off, got everything up there and finally cranked this thing over and I thought, wow, there must be something wrong with the compression tester. Let's test another cylinder. No, there's still something wrong with this. Oh wait, that one cylinder is not too bad. It's not terrible. Oh, the third cylinder is bad also. <laughs> so I thought, man, kind of nailed me on that one. But we're gonna see if we can fix it and I will let you know tomorrow in the live feed. But right now, this is our L99 cylinder head. Remember, 184 intake valve, 1.5 exhaust valve. You can see I've got my fancy clay fixture here. Got it all dialed in, make sure it's all nice. Make sure we get good airflow. The other thing I want to mention is the other thing I'm going to do for the full video, not this live version, but what I'm going to do for the full video is not only am I going to airflow test the L99, the LT1, and the LT4, but I'm going to airflow test all three of those on two different bore sizes. So right now it's on a four inch bore. So we will test all three of them on a four inch bore. Then I'm going to <laughs> reduce the bore size and test them. We have a 3.77, which is close to the bore size of the, of the 4.3 liter. It's not exact, but it's down enough that we should show us whether or not any of these, whether the flow rate goes down on the smaller bore size, which we expect it to, but by how much? Is the L99 hurt less by the small bore than the others because it has smaller valves? We're gonna find that out. So it'd be cool to find out how much the flow goes down with the different bore size. But now let's run some airflow tests. The other thing I want to mention to you guys is when I took this head off and we set it up, this thing runs into a retainer to seal clearance problem at about 500 lift. So, so I'm glad I didn't put a very high lift camshaft in this thing because we're going to have to address that before we go up in cam lift. So about 500 lift seems to be the maximum on this head. So I have this set at 500 lift. And what we'll do is we'll start <laughs> airflow testing and you guys get to watch while it's happening. You guys get to watch in real time, which is kind of cool. So I'm gonna put my, uh, my, hear my headphones on, get a little ear protection because this gets really loud. So it might get loud for you guys too, but here we go. We're gonna turn it on right now, 500 lift. Let's see what the airflow is. Come in here and zoom in. Hands in front of the camera. So now what we do is we just adjust this. You can see it's down to 400 lift. This is our zero point right here. So 400 lift. Now, now we'll go down to 300 lift. Three hundred. So now we'll go down, but we're probably gonna have to adjust the, the flow bench for this one. That's 200. We're going to. So now I'll go ahead and I'm going to have to adjust the flow bench. I got to put it on, just put it on a different scale. As you can see here, I'll give you an idea. Here are the scales up here for the different ranges. So what we do is we want to set the flow bench, set the flow bench in the proper range because, you know, there's a range that we want to test at for the different flow bench adjustment. So what we'll do is we'll move this down. We're going to move it down to two. And we adjust this down to two. And we'll adjust this down. So at 
100 valve lift or about uh, 59 or 60 CFM. We'll go down to 50 thousandths valve lift and then we'll try us the low, really, really low lift stuff. So we're looking at about 30, 31 there at 50 thousandths valve lift. So we have all of our, we all have all of our flow, flow numbers. So I'll show you what they came out to when I first tested them. You guys can take a look. So, ah, I'm falling. Let me bring you over here. Okay. So hopefully you'll be able to see that stuff. So I had a peak flow of 197 at 500 lift. I'd like to run it higher than that, but unfortunately I cannot with the retainer seal clearance until I fix that. I can remove the retainer and what I'll do is, um, I can remove the seal, I mean, and I can fix that. And then I'll be able to flow it at 600 lift just to kind of see if we, if we uh, just to kind of see if we have an increase in flow at the higher lift, so it's gonna be kinda of cool. But I'm after I flow test this, we're gonna flow test the exhaust on the L99, and then we'll flow test the LT4 head and the LT1 head. And by the way, out there, if you, hey guys, if you are interested in a set of LT1 heads, I have a set of basically pristine LT1 or LT4 heads, I, said, I should say. If you're interested in a set of LT4 heads, let me know, so I'll, I'll put uh, my, you should see my email address up there. Uh, I'll put it in the description. If you guys are interested in LT4 heads, these are in basically excellent shape. So after we've done flow testing and stuff, I don't think that they're gonna fit. I don't think we're gonna be able to use them on our L99. We'll probably use the LT1 heads. So the L99 stuff will be available, or the um, LT4 heads will be available if somebody's interested in them. So we're done testing the intake flow on our L99 heads. I'm gonna set reset the thing up so we can test the exhaust next. Tomorrow, as I said, I will be over with the guys at Skunk doing the K24. Hopefully, <laughs> fingers crossed, we might be able to fix it. I might have to take it apart. You guys will know that tomorrow after we do the live feed. That will be cool. And then I've got, um, I'm going to put the Cadillac back up on the dyno here at West Tech and try to finish that up, maybe run some boost on the Cadillac motor. And I'm also working on down here, fingers crossed, the Buick. Lots of good stuff coming up. Yeah, guys, thanks for joining me here for, for, for a little uh, airflow bench testing. Uh, I can take my earphones off. Man, thing's really loud, though. Hey, what do we got? Depending on the flow between LT1 and LT4. I think the LT4 is going to flow a little bit more, but not a lot, and I don't know that we will be able to take advantage of it. I'm expecting that the LT4 is going to be better at the higher lift ranges. Oh, LT4, just send me a... Um, Send me an email and, we'll, and we can, and I can let you know. So if you guys haven't seen it, this is, <laughs> this is the uh, intake manifold that we put the distributor in. <laughs> it works out really well. I think we're gonna, I think we're gonna change that. I think we're gonna put the um, coil packs on there and put a crank trigger on there, but we'll see. I mean, it seems to be working out okay. Okay, back to work guys. Hot riding 101. We like that. We like that. We like 101. We like 102. We like all those. Okay, guys, I'm going to get back to work. Thanks for joining me live. Uh, we got some good flow data on the L99 head. Finally, as I said, 184 valve, 1.5, and it had definitely has a not only a smaller chamber in terms of volume, but also smaller like from an from a measurement standpoint. So it's kind of cool. I really look forward to doing more testing with this. Although here's one thing I also want to point out before we, before we go. I do not like the fact that these are press in studs. <laughs> if you look at the LT1 and the LT4 stuff, they've got screw in studs. So we're gonna kind of be limited in valve spring unless we, you know, drill and tap those and put screw in studs and stuff. So, but that's all. That's all stuff. That's all. We can solve all that. Thanks for joining me, guys. I will see you tomorrow from Skunk 2.